Hi there, Susan Winter. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. I have an interesting discussion on do they love you or your generosity. But before I do, firstly, if you're new today, thank you for stopping by my channel. I really hope you like what you see and what you hear. And I hope that you can easily apply it to your life so that you can have happier, healthier dating scenarios. And for those of you who are my YouTube subscribers who come back every week, join my live show, my ongoing fans, please know how much I appreciate and adore your support. So now on to the question. This was written by Alexander. It is brilliant. And I'm going to tell you why for many reasons. Uh, this is more detailed, okay, than it appears to be. Alexander writes, hi, I was recently dumped after about six months of dating. I gave a bit too much. And as it turns out, they were just taking advantage of my love language, which is gift giving. I would like to know how to identify when someone really loves you and cares about you from a person who is pretending to love you and is using you for their own benefit. Alexander, I thank you for this. I've been down this road before. And in many different ways, it could be gift giving or it could be opportunity, resources, helping somebody. Firstly, you do know what you did. You're talking six months six months at six months at, at one two three four months you are still figuring out how much how little you want to participate and to assist yourself in being in the happiest and most loving relationship that is mutually beneficial you should be looking at their participation to you now for all of you that have a love language the one that you utilize the one that you use to express love is actually the one you wish you could receive. So for you, gift giving is the acknowledgement that you're adored, you're, that you're appreciated, that you're loved. It is the trickiest of all of the love languages because it can be abused so easily. Here's why. Oftentimes, in order to induce an individual to find us as a valuable prospective partner. We might, we might want to be indispensable. It's, it, it creates the impression of security. Like, of course they need what I have. They'd be foolish not to look at how I can assist their life. Look at how I can aid them in accomplishing this job. Look at how I have resources to help them. Oh, I'll help them get their book published. I might be able to get you an in in that school or that college for grad school. Uh, oh, I know somebody that works at that bank or they want a certain product, they can't afford it, and you give it to them. So now you become, in your case, Santa Claus. I don't remember people giving gifts to Santa Claus. You become locked in the giver position, and they become the taker. And if it is that way, and honestly, six months, way, way, way too early for gift giving. A better choice that I would ask everybody consider Words of affirmation, spoken honestly and truly. Whatever is good, kind, wonderful about them that you see, that is kind of universal. People love to hear recognition of the things that they value inside themselves. Doesn't cost you anything, just has to be absolutely based on the truth, not false flattery. Acts of service. That takes time and effort. Now, not everybody recognizes acts of service. Very unfortunate. Some people just think, oh, he likes to do this or she loves cooking. No, she may hate cooking. She may do that because she knows you don't and she'd like to do something for you. And she considers that an act of service because somebody did it for her and she appreciated it. So it doesn't mean that the person who is expressing that form of love language that takes effort, that they enjoy it. That's an act of service. I remember having guys always tell me they'd change the oil on my car. It's like, I can go to a mechanic, but I realized now I didn't know this at the time, but I realized, no, that was an act of service. It was, but 
all of these love languages are not only to recognize the value in our partner, but also to, in some way, induce the interest in this is what I have to offer you should you partner with me. I had a client who early on, the second month of dating somebody, bought this lady jewelry, diamond jewelry. That is so over the top. Now, in his case, fortunately, she was not a user. She was not a gold digger. But what it does is it's the gift giving. It can be misconstrued as being insincere because it could look like you're trying to buy their affection. I know you're not. I know you're not. But it could appear to have an agenda. And here's what I think oftentimes, that people with resources prefer to put that forward as this is what I have to offer you. And it's true. It's one of the chips that you have in the totality of all that you have to offer. But it is a very tricky inducement because truly you can get locked in the position early on you're establishing this is my job this is what i do i give and you receive i provide assistance for you and you don't have to do this so if you're always fixing the problems always acts of service always giving gifts you in a way you kill the other person's incentive right private time I mean, that's the thing people have very little of nowadays. Physical touch, that creates a feeling of intimacy, intimacy and bonding for many. But words of affirmation, I mean, thoughtfulness, kindness, attentiveness, these are so important and they don't cost you anything. And they are probably, I think, the most universally appreciated love language that shows your affection. So. You want to know, you and everybody else in this position that would express themselves this way, how can I determine who is real from somebody who accepts it? Um, people will end a relationship, break up with you if they don't feel they deserve it. You could be setting up a scenario where somebody is leaving you out of guilt. A user will feel more than comfortable taking it. And they would have stayed in longer. Somebody who actually feels badly about it, they will pull themselves away. We don't like getting rewarded for something we didn't do. Uh, people with a moral compass don't, okay? So you're asking, how can I know who's pretending to love me and those who are seeking benefit? One, stop being so gracious and start to allow them to give to you. You probably don't know how to receive. I know, I know, me too. So we can't complain about not receiving if we don't allow ourselves to receive. And the, the true balance in a relationship is the give and take. And what we don't understand, if I can seduce you in any way to open up to the concept of being willing to lean back a little bit and allow them to give to you. Not only does it determine who's real and who isn't, because only somebody wants it one-sided. Once you lean back, they're like, okay, you're good. I don't have to do anything, right? But what it shows you is that it gives the other person the opportunity and the joy to give to you. You see, the joy that we get in helping and giving and all people feel good about themselves when they're doing something good. Charity, everything, you know, it has this component where we we feel like we did something good, you know? Um, and, and so you are denying that feeling in the other person. And for sure, you set up an imbalance and resentment. Resentment on your part because you're overgiving and not getting. Resentment on their part because they're feeling guilty for something they haven't earned. So one, anyone doing physical gift giving and the close cousin of that supplying opportunities. 
and providing resources that they wouldn't have otherwise. It reeks of a lack of confidence. I'm not saying you lack confidence. It looks that way to the recipient. Why are you trying to buy me? Why are you trying to throw things in my face to make me like you? You don't want it to be that because that for sure is somebody that's pretending to like you to receive. Do they give back to you? Do they do, if they are not of the same economic status, do they do what they can? Do they go out of their way to get you a tea or they heard that you like a certain muffin or they know that you like a certain movie and they bought tickets for you so that you can go together? Do they try to express in one of the love languages, any of them, because maybe they're not talking your language, do they try to be reciprocal? That's how you can tell. But to begin with, do not set yourself up for failure by giving too much too soon because people don't feel comfortable receiving what they know they have not invested. Okay, so I hope that helps you. Thank you, Alexander. And whenever I read these, it is not in any way to criticize the person who's writing me. It is to try to illuminate in this situation for, because I know one Email speaks for thousands of people. It is simply to illuminate not only our participation in this, but their participation. So I thank all of you. If you'd like a consultation, please, I love to talk to you personally and work with you. That is my favorite way. Go to susanwinter.net, look at the consultation page. If you want a down and dirty guide for how to figure out everything with when they're playing a dating game, check out the dating games guide that's also in the description here it is the best 10 hours of ai driven you either enter a keyword or you say it and it pulls up exactly in the video the exact point that i'm talking about what it is whether it's um pulling away or being hot and cold everything sexual seduction emotional seduction any kind of dating game every kind of trap trick and term. Okay, thank you everyone. Susan Winter for SusanWinter.net. If you'd like to write me with your video request, please go to the contact page, SusanWinter.net, the bottom underneath Lauren and underneath the agent, you are going to find a box that says Q&A video requests, and perhaps I'll pull up yours as well. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye now.